Hello, my name is Kevin and um, this is the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about um, interwar uh, conical decanters. Yeah, so I think they were a thing. I don't know if anybody else does, but I have quite a few. Um, yeah, I do have a couple that are pre, and I'm not talking about ships decanters, you know, the ones that are kind of like coming out like this. I'll do a separate video for those. Um, so I'm really talking about this kind of angle, you know, steeper ones. And, um, you know, I have a few uh, sort of like late Victorian ones, but most of mine are sort of like in that 1920s, 1930s, and they seem to die out after the war. So, yeah, and, and I have a cast of thousands, you know, I have... Uh, John Walsh Walsh, Thomas Webb, Webb Corbett, uh, Stromberg's Heighten even, uh, who else I'm looking over my shoulder at what I've got. Um, yeah, any, anyway, I'll work, and, I, and a couple of unknowns at least. So um, yeah, so I will show you. And also I'll show you, I have a couple that are um, not really conical as such, but that kind of shape. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be quite interesting because it's not something, I, I don't think I've seen any anyone else pick it up in books or anything like that. Just I like that shape and I look out for it, and it seems to be that's where it's the most popular. So I thought I would share that those ones with you. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this. And I nearly forgot to mention, yeah, a lot of these are quite tall, so um, you're probably going to see the edge of my paper that I use as the backdrop for for when I'm I'm doing these filming the actual glass. So yeah. It is what it is. I'm not going to rush out and buy extra white paper that's specialist or anything. And also I've got it shoved into my bay window here next to me. So that's the space I've got. So anyway, just so you, you, if you see the edges of things around it, that's what it is. So I'm starting out by showing you something. Um, I think this is like a go big or go home. This is a very tall decanter. Look at my hand. Look at that. Look how tall that is. Really tall. And... Um, Sorry, I have to shove my seat forward there because um, I'm running out of room. And um, yeah, look at this stopper, it's superb. So Art Deco, look at that. Yeah, so um, this is um, Webb Corbett, uh, I think it's late 20s, early 30s. Oh, I have uh, a leaflet with this shape in it, it's got a slightly different pattern on the body, but um, yeah, it's unmarked. But um, I think that's such a distinctive shape. You can't miss it. Really great, strong Art Deco piece. And, you know, in the UK, we weren't making that much really strong Deco pieces. But, yeah, this is one of them. So I hope you like that one. So I have here um, a pamphlet, 100 Years of Webb Corbett, uh, 1897 to 1997, uh, published by the um, Broadfield House Glass Museum. The Glass Museum closed for a long time, I don't know how long. Um, it's recently reopened, it's at a new address, I, th I believe. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping maybe late this year I'll, I'll, I'll go and stay near some, somewhere nearby and um, take a good long visit, and maybe even if they'll let me do a film. Um, anyway, this, this leaflet... Um, has a catalogue in it or a page from a catalogue yeah and there's that 1934 and look at that with the same stopper there different pan and also um, yeah I'm going to show you that too while we're about it so here's another Webb Corbett decanter um, I don't have any references for this whatsoever but it is marked um, the, the stopper is like um it's a bit of a art deco kind of, i mean an art nouveau kind of shape but yeah the cutting is very strongly deco symmetrical let's see if i can find the marker the mark is very faint on this one yes yeah, not giving itself up to me there is a mark on it i have oh there it is and uh, yeah i'm not even sure it's going to show oh actually no I'm, I'm even look that's just water stain there it is it's let's see if i can get it to show there can you see that I'm trying to get the light to shine it there 
that is the mark and sort of like it says web corbett made in england so the web corbett is in like an arch and then it's got made in england inside it so i'm gonna have a quick dig into this book here british glass between the wars by um Dudley, what's it? Dudley Leisure Services, edited by Roger Dodsworth. Yep, and um, in it, in the back, it's got some marks. This is the mark that we were looking at. Nineteen thirty to forty-seven, Webb Corbett. So yeah, um, I was actually surprised to find that the mark wasn't in my usual book. I usually use this book, but it wasn't in there. Really surprised me. Um, um, and let me down. So, but I knew that this book had some marks. There's a couple of other books that have marks. Um, and yeah, this is a good book because it's got quite a lot of pictures in it. And um, it's got a lot of things in it that you don't see in other places. So, um, yeah, this is a good book. Um, sticking with Webb Corbett, um, I'm going to show you another lovely book here, I mean, Decanter. So, um, yeah, this one has this lovely wavy, look at that, that's cool. Um, nice, look at the stopper here, look how flat that is. And, yeah, this is a classic piece, this is, it's in a lot of reference books on my website, I think I have five references for this so yeah it's it's a real um, statement piece from them 1933 by uh, designed by Herbert Webb and uh, this one is marked here it is with that you can see a bit more clearly on this one yep, Webb Corbett made in England so yeah this is a really Properly Art Deco looking piece. That lovely wave. I have um, glasses and stuff to go with this. So I will do um, a video on Web Corbett glass because I have quite a bit. And um, yeah, I'll show you the glasses as well. Yeah, seeing as this book pulled me out of a hole, I'll use this one. It has a lovely picture of the decanter here. Yeah, so uh, what do they say? What number is it? One. Three four four, and um, yeah, it says this says nineteen thirty. I'm I'm sure I've seen the date nineteen thirty five thirty three somewhere, in one of the other references. Um, nice glasses to go with it. It's got a finger bowl. Um, there are very there's a post war variation on this with a wheat sheaf going through it. I have decanters for that, but that's post war, so I'm not going to show it here. Um, but when I do Web Corbett, you'll see those so that there's other conical decanters they do with that. But I'm not going to include them in here. So different manufacturer now. We switch to Stuart Crystal. Um, so this is an interwar one. And um, yeah, this is a design. It's distinctly the Ludwig Kanai design with the vertical lines and the leaf patterns. And uh, yeah, it's matched on the stopper as well. And as you'd expect from Stuart Crystal, it's like a piece of engineering. And um, underneath there is a mark, if I can find it amongst all the cloudiness that's down here. Yeah, I don't bother. Um, where is the mark? There it is. And you can barely see it. It's so faint. I can, if I can get some light on it. There, can you see that there? Stuart, England. So, um, so yeah, so that's the Stuart Crystal one. These are not, I have a pair of these, but they're not that common. But, yeah, they're very nice, very um, understated deco, I would say. Um, not too, too flashy. I have, I'm going to show you some more Stuart ones, and I think they use the same mould for all of them, because this shape is exactly the same even though the decanters look very different, with very different stoppers. Um, yeah, it's a thing. The moulds that they were making these things um, with, when they were blowing them into them, uh, were quite expensive apparently, so they would just use them 
to make different looks and shapes and etc etc so here's another Stuart crystal one you can see the shape is exactly as the other one I was just showing you um, these are enameled rings that but they the enamel is poured into these grooves that have been cut if you hold it close you can see it has cut grooves in the surface and then it's got a little ring of enamel around the rim here and the stopper has these little matte bits cut into it and um, yeah this is a marked piece if I can there it is it says uh, Stuart England very faintly so yeah this is it this kind of a nap enameling they were doing between the wall um, I will do a video on my enameled Stuart crystal glass because I have a lot of other bits and pieces I have glasses to go with this and they come in different colors um, but I've only ever seen the decanters in blue so I have a couple more Stuart crystal ones um, yeah and um, this one's plain cool stopper that you can drink out of and uh, it's got where's it written there it says Stuart England as you can see and then this one not only has it does have this enameling on it and they used to enamel these by um, using a stencil and then hand coloring them in and then uh, I can't remember heating it up to about 400 degrees and making it burn it would be ground glass that would fuse with the surface if you treat, mistreat it badly enough it does start to come off a bit but it's pretty much on there you would have to really scrub it to get rid of it um, this one is unusual so this one must have been exported probably to America or somewhere because it says just it doesn't say Stuart England it says made in England so this has been somewhere and come home um, to me how unfortunate is that so yeah um, the enamel I said I'll do a video on the enamel stuff so um, I've got a couple more of this shape to show you so two more these are the last two Stuart ones I'm going to show you um, yeah, so I'm sure these are both Ludwig Knai designs, you can see. with the, This one is a bit weak, I would say, but it's probably cheap. Um, and the stopper's nice, though, that pattern. But this feels know, a bit soft, really, for deco. Whereas this one, this one, they're both Mark Stewart England. I think you've seen the word Stewart England enough. The stopper on this one is cool. Look at that. Look at this pattern here. This is really um, a little bit. Can I, you know, vertical lines, stylized leaves. Yeah, this is super cool. Super deco. Um, even underneath. Look at this here. Isn't that nice? The way they've cut underneath as well. And these are completely polished pontels. All of these have got polished pontels um, yeah so they, these ones are really nice um, I have a book reference for this one I'll show you um, yeah there we go so the book reference I'm going to show you for those um, decanters is 20th century British glass by uh, can I lift it high enough Charles Hadjimuts this is a book and a half and yeah right here there it is there I will do a more general uh, some more general uh, videos on Stuart Crystal and I've got glasses to go with that they're very distinctive glasses with um, the colors on the bases match the colors on the stoppers so you can see there he says this is from a 1930s catalog I could have dragged the catalog but showing you a book is even better and look here there's the clear green one I was showing you as well so there you go. There we go. Here's a decanter by um, John Walsh Walsh. Um, yeah, this is a high quality one. And the patterning is almost 
Art Nouveau, I would say. Um, yeah, it's very nice, isn't that? I'll show you something here. Look at the stopper as well. Top of the stopper matches this pattern here on the on the body. So that's nice. Um, this is marked. I'll show you. Where is it? There it is. There's a bit of a mark there, but it says, "Can I get catch it in the light so you can see it?" No. Oh, there it is. See, it says Walsh, England. I nearly forgot to say. So, why do I think this is um, nineteen or interwar? Probably nineteen thirties, I think. Because um, I don't actually have a reference for it other than the mark, but this patterning here on the neck, it, you see this in the um, Webb Corbett and Stuart crystal decanters from that period, so that's why I'm going. So although I'm thinking, yeah, this looks very Art Nouveau, this looks. This bit here looks very 1930s. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm counting this as an interwar decanter. And also the fact that it's a conical one with a very mushroomy stopper as well. Yeah, so that's why I'm going with that timing for this one. So, for this one, this is John Walsh Walsh. I am not certain it's an interwar one. It might be, might not be, but it's so lovely I thought I'd include it. It's a bit Art Deco-y, I mean Art Nouveau-y. But look at this, that's superb, isn't it? What a lovely design, eh? And um, on the stopper as well. Yeah, I would buy that every day. I did buy it. Um, and the reference I have for it is laughable. And um, yeah, I will show you that. So here's the reference I'm going to show you, the glass of John Walsh Walsh, 1850 to 1951, by Eric Reynolds. You might laugh when you see the reference I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, I wish this book was a bigger format because the picture here is tiny. Can you see, can I get closer? There it is. So, yep, there's my reference. Um, but there's no year. Damn them. So here we go with a Thomas Webb decanter. It kind of looks familiar, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, so I've been told these are 1930s. I don't have a book reference for this precisely. Um, I have seen this shape um, used for um, corona coronation commemorative decanters. So they were definitely making it into the early 50s. Um, it is marked underneath with... Um, can I get it in the right place? Yeah, very clearly. Made in England. Web. And, um, yeah, this stopper looks very familiar, doesn't it? With it being a different colour. I've actually pulled the other one back out again. Look at that. It's kind of... Yeah, we're not copying you, we are copying you, because the difference is, yeah. This is a hollow stopper, this is actually completely solid, but with a cup in the top. So yeah, so that's the difference between them. Yeah. So, who copied who? Who was first? I don't know. I have a horrible feeling Ludwig Kanai was first, um, and... Where we're copying him. Um, these must have been successful. That's all I can think. So here we are heading off into the unknown. Um, I've been told different things about who this might be, who might be the designer. Um, I think it might be Whitefriars, it might not be. Um, yeah, just trying to get my PC to shut up. It keeps doing that. Yeah, and it's got this kind of jazz age um, dancers on it. Very done, very abstractly. I've got glasses to go with it. 
that are basically the same shape upside down, drawn with um, dancers on as well, just like this, all sort of like slightly different poses. Um, it's got a hollow blown stopper. I think it might be white fries. This looks like the old amber um, color. So um, yeah, I'm. I think it might be white fries, um, but nobody can. It's not in any reference books. Um, nobody's been able to give me any assurances. Um, all I've got is lots of different stories about who might be the designer. Who um, it might be. James Hogan, it might be uh, Hugh Duncook, don't know, nobody seems to know. This may seem a bit random, I thought I'd do this. Um, I do actually have this in, in Old Amber, but it's packed away at the moment because I've got building work going on and it's in, in lock and store at the moment. But check out this. So this is definitely Whitefriars. Yeah, both hollow blown stoppers. So that this is why I think it might be white fries, and I actually do have one the same colour as well. So yeah, but nobody's willing to back me up on that. Um, so I'll just have to live with it being. It's very nice. It's very deco jazz age. So it feels like a rocket launch because I've had to sit so far back to get these ones in, or at least this one on the right in. Um, yeah, these are Stromberg's Heighten um, from the 1930s. Look at this, they're imports to the UK. They've got a hexagonal moulding. Um, yeah, this one has the same hexagonal moulding. Um, they're the same pattern essentially. Um, this one's called straw, this colour. This is called tourmaline, black obviously. Um, yeah, these are really nice. Um, I collect a bit of Strombug Titan and um, I'm always on the lookout for it as you might have known if you've been watching my other videos. And um, yeah, these are a couple of my favourites. This is my tallest decanter that I own. Um, see how yeah, it's huge. Um, but you probably only got about a bottle in that, and you probably get a, a, a glass and a bit in that one because they're so thin. So, my reference for these decanters is the um, Journal of the Glass Association, Volume 8, 2008. And um, there's an article in it by Graham Cooley and Charles Hedgematch. And um, yeah. Here is the decanter here. It's a really good article, and it's even better with this um, catalogue in it. This is a BO912, I think. Yeah, cool. So um, back to a more normal sized decanter. You can see my hand here. Uh, this is another Stromberg's Heisen one. This is a really sweet little decanter. Um, it's got a little ring bit on the neck here. Nice pumpkin mark. This is in the straw colour as well. The stopper. Yeah. A nice little spiral on it. Yeah, I like this one. And uh, I will show you the reference for it. So, back with the Journal of the Glass Association, Volume 8. And, um, yep, here it is. I saw this decanter and went, yeah, I've smelt that shape before. And here it is in the book. Um, yeah, you have to keep looking at your books and stuff. And then stuff gets imprinted in your head. And then um, you see it and you're going, yeah, I think I know. I think I know. And you run away and have a look. But yeah. So there's the reference. And it's a S4912. So I'm back with the last two. I have a couple of um, mystery decanters. I think these are Scandinavian. They are very, um, very like the straw colour ones that you saw a minute ago. Um, 
this one is very similar to the Strombex item one, apart from the optic moulding is like, it must have about 15 sides on it. You can see it's kind of, yep, and the stopper fits nicely, same colour, no marks. And then this one, this is quite a cute one, this one, same straw colour. Um, stopper is, you, know, you can go around stabbing people with that. <laughs> yep, um, very delicate. We made at the top here. Oh, sorry, I'm showing a bit of dust there. Um, and then it has this lovely little delicate fish pattern um, that runs around. It's got three, repeated three times as it goes round. Pontal mark. Yep, no, no maker's mark or anything like that. Showing a bit of wear, so I think these are probably these. To me, these look. It's, they're similar enough to the other two that I've just shown you to go, yeah, these look 1930s. And and yeah, and even this kind of cutting here, this is very sort of like, very like the kind of thing that Stromberg's Heiden was doing pre-war as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm comfy these are probably pre-war, but I've never seen them anywhere else. I've never seen any references for them. So yeah, if anybody knows what these are, I would like to know. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I tried to show you some different references than what I usually do. Um, yeah, I have a lot of books, and, and I will um, at some point start doing some videos on just the references I have so you can see what kind of thing, things I use. Um, yeah, and I've spent a long time looking at them. Um, and I have a really good memory for stuff like this, so I'm not expecting everybody else to go, yeah, I can just flick through this and learn it, but um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. So, but yeah, really good, have references, because you get a feel, even if you don't know everything in it, you get a feel for what different companies do, and you can look at something and you go, that feels like something good, and even if you don't know, you, you get a feel for design, etc., etc., just by flicking through and looking at as many references as possible. Um, so anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I will be doing some of this class you might see it again because I'm going to be doing other related topics to go. So I'll be covering the different manufacturers, etc, etc. So uh, I hope you enjoy those. And the two decanters that I was looking at at the end. Yeah, if anybody knows, I'd really like to know as well. Because um, I, I do this, you know, buy, oh, I think that's good. I'll buy it and try and figure it out later. And that doesn't always work. Um, and yeah, I like that conical shape, so I went, yeah, yeah, I'm going to buy those. Yeah, biggest mistake ever. But anyway, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Please remember to uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you uh, for your time. Thank you.